Shout out to the wonderful folks at Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of By Release. We're starting today with a fun fact. On June 6, 2005, Master Farmers were put into RuneScape and players could pickpocket them to get seeds? Seeds? What are these seeds for? I can't use them for anything. What's going on here? That's right, seeds were put into the game way before farming was. Jagex teased the boys and eight girls of RuneScape for an entire month by letting everyone collect these mysterious seeds. And everyone was very, very confused. I don't know if they actually were, I was seven when farming was put into the game. Game. Everything I've ever told you may or may not be a lie that I made up. On July 11th, the game was introduced to farming, a skill for the chillers. Farming is pretty straightforward. You rake the weeds, fertilize the soil, and stare at the plants anywhere from 10 minutes to 15 hours as they slowly grow. But if you're intelligent, you'll just ask the overseer of each patch what kind of shit they hoard, and they'll watch it for you. So you bet your ass I'm gonna be doing that. Two quests from now is Forgettable Tale of a Drunken Dwarf, which was the first quest with a farming requirement. I barely know how to farm on my main account, let alone on a time era restricted Iron Man, so I'm getting a head start. Hands down, the best way to train this skill is to plant giant ass trees in the ground. They give fatty XP, and as long as you pay the gardener, you can do literally anything else for hours while it just grows. Couldn't help but notice there's a splasher. I also couldn't help but notice this is a multi-combat zone, and this person's an idiot. What a lot of people don't realize about me is I have way too much time on my hands. Not all of it's spent productively. Exhibit A, here we go. If you're gonna splash, that's fine. Do your own thing. But there are countless places to splash that are not multi-combat. I consider myself a teacher, maybe even a professor. Ah, yes, there they go, again. Uh, oops. I don't know where that came from. Who, who killed that duck? Why am I not splashing anymore? Ah, this one's a stubborn one. Gotta respect the ducks of the park. Hey, it's me, Drake. You might know me from my music. I was also a wheelchair Jimmy on Degrassi. I got shot, but like, who's, who's counting that stuff? Ah, ah, oh god! I'm gonna make it painfully obvious this time. Cecilia, what's, what's happening? <laughs> I've finally been caught red-handed. They're just hopping worlds. They're not even gonna switch spots. Well, there's 17. That's what I needed for Dwarf Quest. I have so many more trees. All right, I just finished my first tree run ever. Got 21 from that. I'm awesome. Thought I'd change up the pace, so I did some skills over the last couple weeks. Here's some leaked footage of me crafting. Here's a Slayer level I got, and uh, that's that's my progress video. Thanks for watching. Today we continue the elf storyline with Morning's End Part 1, the way less terrifying part of Morning's End. Here's a quick recap of the entire elf story so far. The story began long ago, very long ago, with Counselor Halgrive, who assigned us to kill and incinerate discolored sheep that were apparently carrying the plague. After we did that, this led into the first official chapter, Plague City. We helped this guy Edmund rescue his daughter Elena, who was being held captive inside West Ardoin where the plague was going wild. In the meantime, we bullied a child in telling us about the treasure underneath Backstory and Falls. We didn't get any treasure though, instead we returned lost jewelry to the graves of Elven King Backstorian and his wife Glarial. Then Biohazard. We helped Elena get plague samples from inside the city, only to reveal that the plague was fake. We confronted King Lathis and told him about it, but he already knew. It was a scheme to stop his brother, King Tyrus, who ruled West Ardoin since he was corrupted by the Dark Lord, whoever the hell that is. After that, we became a man by doing underground pass, navigating through the depths of hell to find a pathway for an army so King Lathis could get his boys over to Elfland. We fell 50 times, made my favorite song to date, and killed the demigod Iben. Rather than send an army of trained soldiers and doing the logical thing, the king sent us to kill his brother. We went into the big forest and met elf leader Lord Iowerth, and he taught us how to launch barrels of explosives into camps. On our way back, we ran into Arianwin, who was a rebel elf. He revealed to us that King Tyrus was not evil at all. We just murdered a very good guy. King Lathis was actually the guy in cahoots with the Dark Lord. He wanted to take back Camelot. I didn't know he ever owned it, but he wanted it back, apparently. Finally, we met up with Isildwin and Alunid. These names are so stupid. For roving elves. We planted a crystal tree for them and in return got a crystal bow that I still can't use. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are here outside the gates of Arendar. Apparently that's what this place is called, which is a lot easier than hating our lives going through the underground pass. This is, this is great. This is this agility shortcut? Can I use this? 85? 
You need 85 to go up there? What kind of rocks are these? Why is that so difficult? Oh, what agility level you train into? 85. Why? To go up a 60 degree hill that a toddler could climb. Hey! Alunid, you look more like a Trixie to me. I think I think that's your name. Would I like to start Morning Zen Part 1? Uh, you know what? I don't really like quests. Oh, I'm gonna go do something else. Okay, she's taking us to Ledia. I don't want to brag or anything, but I just got a teleport crystal. I can come back right here in front of them anytime I want. Oh, Luna just logged out. All right, well, I'll teleport in front of this guy anytime I want. Wait a second. Is this lore? And is this a freeze frame? It sure is. This guy was just letting us know that Lord Iowerth and King Lathis are definitely working together. He doesn't know why King Lathis is doing it. I don't fucking know either. So you know me. I like to dress up as people I'm not and go undercover. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I think it's so cool that the RuneScape elf storyline inspired the entire Game of Thrones series. Look at those guys. They look familiar to you? Yeah. They sure do. I have to disguise myself as a mourner, and there's one now. I'm gonna jack his stuff. Hey, man! Is he leaving? Do I have to, like, catch him? Oh, fuck! Oh, <laughs> they just keep coming this way. Hey, come here, I wanna talk to you for a second. Oh, god! <laughs> Just threw a Pokeball at me. All my stats are at 20 now. This is good. I like a challenge. You know what? Lower them to 10. You can shout at me all you want, but I'm taking your pants. So the top is bloody and the pants are ripped. I I, I don't understand why I need to get them fixed. Could I not just be a battle-hardened mourner or is that not what we're all about? Yeah, Death Guard. The blood and rips make for better RP. I don't want to fix anything. Why do I have to do this? I'm going to try something here. This is a game theory. I'm going to keep the plague jacket and pants and see if they're the exact same player model. Because if they are, I'm going to be pissed because I... I, I just found a loophole. Uh-oh, is that is that laundry guy? Hey, man. How do you remove bloodstains? How do I remove bloodstains? Show me how to remove the bloodstains. Uh, show me now. So he's not letting me have his special soap, and, I mean, his whole life is devoted to laundry, clearly. Ah, uh, you steal the soap! You're an asshole! Congratulations! Can no longer do the only thing he's meant to do. The plague jacket's a lot more practical. That's got the gloves built into it. The mourner thing... Just the top. No, son, I can tell a plague jacket from a mourner jacket from a mile away. Man, whatever. I'm going back to Elf Town to get my pants fixed. Ah, damn, girl. Got the high heels on. Ma'am, I broke my pants. Can you do anything about that? You see that? Oh, you didn't see that? Oh, that's crazy, because they're the same fucking thing. She's hot, me. She shot me. That's the name. I'm going crazy. But left my house is so long. All right, the HQ's up here. It's very important that I stay in character. I am a new recruit trying to prove himself to the bad guy elf leader. I take it you're one of the new recruits. Yeah, that's me. I'm a real new recruit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very excited to start my new job. As you may know, part of what we do here is keep the people believing in the plague. Why? I feel like that was the one thing I shouldn't have said to this guy. If the plague is fake, wouldn't it be better security to have everyone down here take their masks off? There'd be no worry about anyone being undercover if everyone was just chilling down here with no mask on. Or does that make a little too much sense? I'm pretty sure I spoiled this back when we did Sheep Herder, but yeah, he just revealed that he dyed the sheep different colors to make them look like they're plagued. Basically, he just confirmed we killed innocent sheep. And now we have to go do that. We have to go re-dye the sheep with this device he just gave me. It's broken and this gnome right here knows how to fix it. This is so sad. I need you to fix this. Okay, I tickled this gnome and gave him cookies, so he fixed my rocket launcher. Oh, I forgot to mention, it, it doesn't launch rockets. It launches obese frogs that explode. I just realized that since I'm the one dying these sheep, I'm responsible for the next guy who mindlessly does sheep herder and incinerates these things. Master Fisher, don't tell anyone what you saw here, all right? I'm just... Always doing shit I'm not supposed to for a little too long, going a little too far. Wants to know if I know a trustworthy biologist. Oh, they're very trustworthy. The biologists I know are nothing but the most trustworthy, in fact. So, you know, there I, here I go. Don't watch me leave. <laughs> I'm gonna take this rotten apple here. I guess I should explain things. I'm gonna make this whole town appear plagued by poisoning their food supplies with toxins from rotten apples. And Elena, my trustworthy biologist, is gonna assist me with that. It's me, Byron Reese. You seen my movies? Elena's so terrified. She knows it's me, but I'm holding a bazooka. She's like, I'm not poisoning people. That's messed up. Okay, I've got to make another barrel of naphtha, but first I need to get a shit ton of rotten apples. Excuse this old stomping technique. You all owe me five bucks if I get this on the first try. Fork it over, all of you. All of you owe me five bucks. And then we use the sieve on it. God, I'm such a scientist. I think I'm one step away from making meth. We're gonna use that on range. Nothing could go wrong. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, that's good. That's top quality, top shelf, baby.
<laughs> okay, let's get out of here. The door was just open to their food supply. There's no security whatsoever. Yeah, I'm just gonna poison this right in the church. I sure hope God's busy doing something else right now. Hey, that guy's done eating by now. Get him back up there. This dude's talking about Saren, the Dark Lord Goddess thing, and about the great temple beneath the city. If you don't know what temple he's referring to, you'll know very soon when I'm crying myself to sleep because of part two. Yeah, I should probably report this to Aaron Wynn. Why am I saying this to him? What was that? I said... I said you're really fucking hot. I'm going back to elf land. Ah, smells good here. Yeah, see, look, the elf warriors are 108. The mourners in the basement were 108. There's some sketchy shit going on. Who's this? Oh, Rosetta. Rosetta, you want a stone? Como esta, baby. Arian Wynn, I, I need a couple days off. I've done a lot of bad things. Uh, I need to chill out. Good God, that is fat XP. I like that. Until next time, elf boy. And remember, don't trust anyone, not even yourself. I'll bet you could suck a golf ball through a garden hose. Wait, what? I look like an idiot. We're about to embark on our 85th quest. That seems psychotic. I cannot believe I still have all of you fooled that this is a good series. You stupid idiots. Forgettable tale of a drunken dwarf, our final Keldegrim story. Commander Veldeban wants to see me. I don't blame him. I'm a legend around here nowadays. Have you heard? You mean half the world has suddenly become a farmer? 2005 jokes that no one except for me would pick up on. Cool. He's telling me that the Red Axe, a company far less superior to Purple Pooter, that's how it's pronounced by the way. All of them, including the old boomer dwarf, left the city. There's a drunk dwarf that knows some sketchy things about them, so we're gonna pay him a visit. These intro cutscenes are terrible. I don't even understand how this got approved. Like, yep, that's good enough. Just when they start it, play that. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna show you how they could have done this. Take notes, Jagex. The perfect cinematic for a quest about making beer. All right, here's the drunk dwarf. I think drunk might be an understatement. This guy is blacked out. He has no idea what's going on. I like his hat. He's like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You're a cool guy. Except now he's screaming like he's a homeless guy outside of a gas station. I'm getting out of here. He requested a beer. I brought a beer, but he doesn't want this one. So I have to go down to the bar and get the one he actually wants. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see the difference. He wants the really good stuff. Kelda Stout. If I want information from this guy, I have to brew him a beer that he's craving right now. How valuable is this information? Because that sounds like a tedious process. He gave me one seed and said I need four. I guess I have to go find three other people that have these seeds conveniently laying around their house. Suspect one, Rowdy Dwarf, right outside the bar. It looks like he's working for the bar. He's got a sign that says pub, and it's pointing to the beer that is somehow not spilling out right now. That's amazing. He wants a heap of ashes. Let me get that from the bank. I like how my guy knew I had that in the bank already. That's cool. Here you are, sir. Two more to go, and then I guess we could start the quest. I guess this jolly old guy has one too. He wants me to have a toast with him. Drinking's bad for you, I say. Well, that's a bold statement in this city. Cheers! Huzzah! <laughs> I like that guy. The last dude who has a seed is under White Wolf Mountain, so time to take a ride. Hold on tight. Didn't someone shoot you out of a cannon? Oh god. Apparently me shooting out of a cannon was the greatest thing to ever happen in dwarf history. Yeah, he has a seed. He's just being an asshole about it. What if I offer you a drink? Are you offering? I just thought I'd save myself the trouble of waiting for you to ask me this time. They still acknowledge it, and they, they still make it a part of every plot. Here's a dwarven stout, take it, you alcoholic, all of you. My guy's losing his shit. We got four seeds. Now it's time to put our farming training to use. It's gonna take like 15 to 20 minutes to grow. I guess this gardener has like a side task we can do in the meantime. I'm not, I'm not doing anything else, so. He gave us a letter to deliver to that one dude who's near the farm outside Falador. Can I read his letter? What if it's some juicy crazy stuff. I don't know, it's just some boring shit. They definitely did that on purpose. They knew everyone would look in this letter. They could have had so much fun with it. Just some random optional side story Easter egg where you deliver a disgusting sext from one farmer to another. The most beautiful love story in all of RuneScape. But no, nah, no, nah, it's cool. This quest is exciting enough. Elston's like, man, that's it? That's... Are you sure? There's nothing on the back? You... 
That's all he said? Hey, look at that. They're done growing. Now we've got the hops. Hey, I delivered your letter. He was very disappointed. Oh, more seeds. Thank you so much. I love farming. Yeah, a little bump in the road. It's come to my attention that I need barley malt to brew this beer. And the only way to get it is to grow it myself, which is an additional 40 minutes of waiting. I love this. Okay, 40 minutes. How do I spend my time wisely with 40 minutes? Wait a second. I've got the perfect idea. Games room? That's right. Am I gonna challenge your ass? Yep. Yes, yeah, it's going pretty well for me. God damn it. That was my first time playing checkers in uh, <laughs> years. Probably since I was a little child. Let's see it. Let's see the big guy moves. It's not impossible. Except it is. Plotting. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. <laughs> damn it! Yeah. Boy. No. Yeah, you always gotta be 70 steps ahead of your opponent. <laughs> I'm leaving on top. I'm fucking. Oh, oh. Yeah. And look at that. I've played this game for 14 years. This is the first time I've ever done anything with barley. Apparently, I need to go put this over a range and, and cook it. So I'll go do that and then go to Keldegrim. Well, I thought I was ready to brew this thing. I need an empty pot, though. I guess I'll go, go to the bank and get a pot. By release, episode 23, the hunt for pot. Time to mix it all in. Get this over with. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know what I'm saying? Drop that in there. See if that does anything. Oh, my God. Did you fuck it up? No. Look. It's on the table right there. Yeah, no, I see that. I have to wait with this guy for another 20 minutes. He's either a train conductor or a rapper from the late 80s. He did ad libs for the Beastie Boys. <laughs> <laughs> and before that, he was just a backup dancer for Spice Girls. You know that song Intergalactic by them? It's like Intergalactic. <laughs> he was that guy. <laughs> he was the guy doing the robot Intergalactic voice. <laughs> Oh my god, it's John Adams. John Adams. The beer is done. Oh yeah. What if I accidentally drank it? Would I have to restart the whole quest? Just got actually scared for a second. All right, you you whore. It's just doing this weird cutscene thing where it fades to black. He's telling me a story that makes zero sense right now. He's clearly lost his mind. He was mentioning this blocked off area of the minecarts. So, uh, whoa, hey, I'm good at moonwalking. Look at me go. We're gonna see how to get that back open so we can go and investigate. This dude doesn't have the authority to open that part of the mines up, but I know the guy who does. Yep, it's open now. Let's get after it. That doesn't look very open to me. Am I gonna crash? Uh... Hello? Well, we found a crazy cavern looking thing. Essentially, this whole place is just a back and forth puzzle. I get these green and yellow blocks. I map out the left and right turns to get to different chests around the rooms. And eventually I'll have enough blocks to get me to the exit. Here we go, first exit. Whoa, what? <laughs> Wait, what is my guy doing? What am I doing? What is this pose? Blah, blah, blah. Were they just too lazy to put the text above their heads? They discussed a very vague evil plan that they plan to go through with. It would appear that I have to continue through the puzzle to continue learning about this evil plan of theirs. Be quiet, shut up, shut up, shut the fuck up, don't talk. Be quiet. Oh, look, another puzzle. Be right back. Let's see what's going on. Nothing like a blocked off storage room that tell me every detail of who's undercover and working with who. Mystery conveniently solved. The old guy that stormed out of the room last quest is planning an invasion of of the world. He's a real bad guy. I never would have guessed something crazy like that. Oh boy. Should have brought some runes. Start raising hell in here. Take all these guys out one by one. Problem solved. They had some test subjects. They're making an army. This gnome guy wants to approve of them first. Why is it always the dwarves, the gnomes, the, the little guys? Always causing a ruckus. Uh oh. Chaos dwarves. Look at those guys. There's their army. I didn't know they were test subjects. I thought they were just assholes. Behold the power of Zamorak. Level 48. Bow down. The ogre found me. Okay. Uh, why would they bring me back here? So that drunken dwarf from earlier, his memory was wiped and scrambled, and that's exactly what just happened to us. But good thing I'm always recording. I can show all this footage to, to Commander Veldaban. The spell not only screws our memory, but makes us crave beer and kebabs all the time. Yeah, I'm talking to the commander. I can't remember anything. I'm just saying how much I'd want to drink. Okay, bought a beer and a kebab from the bar, and now the cutscene ensues. This scene here is great. It's me telling a wacky story to everyone in the bar. You might notice the drunken dwarf random event guy is right in front of me having a good time, which is what makes this sad. With the game originally being backed up from 2007, this is the final chapter of the Red Axe story since it wasn't continued in the old school universe. I won't spoil anything, but there's three more quests that were put into RuneScape 3 that continue this. And if you look into the lore, you'll see how awesome it'd be if old school put their own twist on this cliffhanger. I bet you by release would love that sort of thing. But until then, it's been real, Keldegrim.
Again, thanks to Squarespace for being today's sponsor. If there's one thing I've learned, no one, including your own family, will take you seriously unless you own your own website. At Squarespace, you can purchase a domain and set it up right away with one of their quirky templates. You can easily see traffic analytics and trends, which is really handy if you set up your own shop. And if you're looking to create something on the community side, they've got an integrated comment system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Wish I would have found Squarespace sooner, then some of you might actually buy my shirts. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, Go to squarespace.com slash Jimmy to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.